If you're watching this video, I'm gonna take a guess that either you or someone that you know has been infected with the sailing dream. In which case, welcome to the club. But before you go off and spend all of your life savings on a big old boat like me and my husband did, please, please, please watch this entire video where I'm going to share with you eight personality traits that I think are absolutely vital to enjoying boat life. Because if I'm completely honest, after having lived on a boat for six months, I don't think it's something that I would want to do full time again. I love sailing, don't get me wrong, but full time sailing is a whole different ballgame. I'm sailing on Champagne, which is a New Zealand designed Cavalier 45 mono haul heavy blue water sailboat. The captain of our dear girl is Martin, who plans to take Champagne to Fiji this season and potentially around the world. We're waking up in Talaga Bay, which is the second place that we've had to make a last minute stop on our trip from Wellington to Auckland. Well, good morning world. Um, yeah, slept pretty good. It's cold because there's a southerly breeze, so it's freezing. I'm actually shivering as I talk to you. While our 50 degrees Fahrenheit weather may be laughable <laughs> in colder climates, the ability to not only handle but thrive in uncomfortable conditions is crucial to enjoying boat life and sustaining a self-sufficient lifestyle. Many say you grow when you're uncomfortable, and that's why idiots like me purposely put ourselves in uncomfortable positions. But how long is too long for being uncomfortable? When do the downsides outweigh the benefits? The answer to this, of course, is very different for each person and requires you to be really honest with yourself. Studies show that when people can positively spin otherwise negative cues, such as saying, you know, discomfort is a sign of achievement, right? They are more likely to stick with that activity. Are you that kind of person? Self-sufficiency doesn't mean you have to shun the tools that are available to you. I've seen many a sailor make themselves miserable and put themselves in danger in the name of purity. I don't use these tools. They were not made by the land. They're unnatural. Captain Martin was able to successfully circumnavigate New Zealand for a reason. Back to um, file our trip report. Uh, we're just leaving Tolaga Bay. Uh, there are three POV and we're heading to Fitianga. In fact, Lisa Blair, who just set a new record for being the fastest person to circumnavigate Antarctica solo, unassisted and non-stop, said that it's the planning and resources which made her trip successful. But you'll have an issue if some of those resources conflict with your morals. For example, Catching, killing, and filleting fish will do heaps to extend your time away from land, but many people have a problem with that. In the end, then we put the uh, beer can here, very important. That it has to be a very expensive beer. <laughs> In fact, I found the, mo the more expensive the beer that you drink, the more the fish that you catch. Personally, though, as someone who has spent ample time in both the hunting and vegan worlds, I really appreciate having a clear understanding of where my food comes from and understanding that something had to die for me to eat. Too many people are too far from the act. Sometimes I've had kawaii and you get little fish inside and I sometimes eat the fish that they've eaten. Huh. You get them out, they're like little anchovies. My dog eats your own puke too. Ew. Um, I just want to get, get the knife in here. Boat's rocking a bit. It's fine. Running. There's going to be people watching this video going, you're doing it all wrong mate, you know, you shouldn't do it like that. Because everybody knows, has their own way of filleting fish. Yeah. But that's fine. That looks so delicious. Okay. If you get hungry while you're doing it, you just eat it. Lovely. Then what I'll do, I'll just descale that. Nice, quick and easy, man. Well yeah. done. There we go. One fillet of one side of the kawaii. I just love the fact that we only just killed the fish and now we're eating it. It's just so good. Well done, sir, and well done, fish. Thank you so much, fishy. <laughs>
A self-sufficient boat isn't just about sailing, fixing things, and feeding yourself, though. Right. Ready? Gotta get the right machine out. Here it's also go. about keeping your sanity, and part of that is taking care of your body. It's an exercise in itself just getting the bloody thing out. Yeah. On boats, that's actually surprisingly hard to do, given that it's such a small space to move around. Finding something that is sustainable on a boat and that you'll actually keep with can have a huge impact on your overall enjoyment and sustainability of boat life. One big difference between living a self-sufficient lifestyle all the time and just being a weekend boater is that you find yourself out in all types of weather. Most sailors will be forced to reef in their sails at some point in big wind, but not every sailor will be forced to fly a spinnaker in light wind. So we're thinking to fly the spinnaker and it'll be my first time ever, which I'm pretty stoked about. So this goes well. And with horror stories abound from even your most experienced sailors, it takes a high level of curiosity preparation and bravery to fly that giant sail. And without the spinnaker or its sibling Jenniker, the self-sufficient sailor must have ample supply of fuel, or patience, to wait for the wind. So we're motor sailing along. Um, we've got about eight knots of wind, uh, but yeah, we just don't have enough wind to be on the sails alone. Um, the sails are helping us about two knots. We've got probably one meter waves on our uh, port beam, and uh, I think we're about 40 nautical miles from Fitianga. So we'll have probably spend the next, what, 10 hours or so getting there, maybe less, maybe more. And then, yeah, we made it. Now, because you're putting yourself in a range of situations, and also because salt water is super corrosive, it's inevitable that something will break. And as sailors know, when you're fixing one thing, you will discover at least 10 more items to fix. Heed this warning. But if you find that you get excited when you fix things and when you work them out, well, boat life might actually be for you. But be honest with yourself. Just to be clear though, it's not all challenging and there are heaps of amazing moments. But as I sail with more and more captains, I find a lot of them actually struggle to really enjoy those moments as they're constantly fixing things. A necessary characteristic on a boat, but also one that allows small beautiful moments to pass by. The captains I have personally come to respect the most are the ones who tinker, but also stop to celebrate the small moments. How do you feel about finally going around the East Cape? It's great, I've done all four now. It's like, yeah, we've made, I've done North Cape, South Cape, West Cape, East Cape. Yeah, no, I mean, this one's been an easy one, really, because we've got no wind. It's been quite the weather's been quite benign this particular day. Yesterday was horrible, but today's quite benign. Um, but it is always good to get round, round the Cape, yeah. But even the quintessential moments can get old once you've experienced them every day. It's always really funny coming into port because we've been away from service for so long and you know the sunset's beautiful right now but we've seen a couple of sunsets now and we haven't had service or a phone and so all of us are checking our phones and seeing how the world is doing and it looks like y'all are doing pretty well so uh, yeah the weir weird idiosyncrasy and idiosyncrasies of being a cruiser you know we're addicted to our phones what can I say Of all the traits that I think you need as a self-sufficient sailor, 
I would say hands down, the most important is the ability to make bonds with other cruisers. Because at some point, you will need to ask for help. We're going to review this beer now, uh, Waitoa Afterglow. Uh, it's a hazy IPA and it won the Brewers Guild Award the trophy for best in class this year. As you would have seen if you've been following our story for a while, the people around us are the ones who have kept our heads up this last year. Our situation was super extreme, of course, but in my experience, full-time sailors rely on each other much more than landlubbers do in everyday life. It's got a decent haze to it. Yeah, nice, it's got that body, the body, the, the sweetness, the sort of thickness of those hazies, which I like. And, but yeah, it's not too cloying, it's, it's still quite refreshing, it's got a bit of a bitter aftertaste. Cheers. Once again, life threw the unexpected at me, and I was forced to book a last minute flight home for a private family emergency. It's been fun. Yeah, it has. It's an abrupt ending, mm -hmm. but that happens, and we've had fun, right? Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, it'll be it'll be just me and David from now on. It'll be seem weird not having you, but quieter. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'll be a little bit quieter. Um we won't be being filmed all the time. <laughs> but uh no, it's been great having you on board and um yeah, sorry that you had to leave in such a hurry, but um these things happen. Yep, indeed it does. Yep. We've got a beautiful sunrise to send me off. <clears throat> While I was disappointed by not finishing the full trip to Auckland, I was reminded of a lesson that all self-sufficient sailors eventually learn. Plans change all the time, and you will enjoy a boat life more if you can go with the flow. I'd made it around the East Cape, and that had been my goal. So I was going to be happy with that. If I were ever given the opportunity to full-time sail again, the first thing that I would start doing right now is learning all of the boat systems because I can tell you now, it is such an intense process when you're out at sea, everything is breaking and you're learning the entire boat systems, plumbing, electricity, the engine, everything. By the way, if you like this video, go ahead and watch this one right here where Captain Martin has to deal with a very unique emergency situation.